Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. How is this possible, man? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it in 1 800 5 800 Talk. 1 800 5 800 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. And we are together again on the radio. Appreciate your patronage. Um, Before I get to anything this hour, First, I want to remind you that Flash Friday is coming up tomorrow. Tomorrow. It starts at 3 p.m. Pacific time, Flash Friday. Uh, check your local listings. <laughs> Remember, it's headlights on tomorrow, guys. Headlights on to show you are a loyal listener to the Tom Likas show. And ladies, it's time to show your knockers. Uh, by the way, we had a caller on the program named Carolyn. Another thing I want to say here before we get started with this hour. Is that Dean out there? No, I, that's why I said it's not me. Who's screaming out there? It's the monitor. Can we? What What monitor is that? Is that? Well, we got to ask the AM guys to turn the monitor down because either put some soundproofing up in here or turn that down. Is that another radio station I'm hearing? Is that a secret way to try to get more listeners to the all-new station, to, to sneak it on our state? Get, turn that down. Jesus. <laughs> you know, it's bad enough they don't give us any soundproofing, but now you got the AM guys down the hall blasting the AM stations. What the hell is that all about? <laughs> Unbelievable. Anyway, Carolyn, 4'11", 160, and says she's not fat. And so uh, we got her photo, and we have posted it on uh, our MySpace. Just go to MySpace.com slash Tom Likas. That's MySpace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. Get a good look at Carolyn and give us your honest opinion. Get a look at what 4'11 and 160 looks like and tell us if you think she's as hot as she thinks she is. All right? Let's go to our MySpace. It's myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. Jesus. Got that photo in front of me right now. <laughs> we did have to scroll through the photos a bit because uh, Carolyn has mastered the art of photographing herself at angles. Which includes uh, cutting off right at the cleavage. Uh, you know, there's nothing below the cleavage. You don't see anything. Or hiding behind other people. Which is kind of hard for her to do. <laughs> but uh, you, you know, we had to scroll through before we finally found the appropriate photo. <laughs> her arm looks like my leg. It's not all on the boobs, dear. Anyway, go to our MySpace, get a look, <laughs> write your comments. She can come back to our MySpace page and get a look at what people think. Ooh wee. <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, big news story. This is a big news story. Um, I think I heard it blasting from down the hall and came into my headphones. <laughs> That's how I heard about it. We have hit a uh, new milestone in America. Have you heard about this? New milestone. You know, remember uh, McDonald's had millions and millions and then billions and billions sold? We have hit a new milestone in America. Do we have a drum roll for this? Let's play a drum, let's play a drum roll for this. It's a, new, it's a new milestone we have reached in America. Are you ready? 
Finally! We've topped the one million mark. One million foreclosures. <laughs> All right, that's enough. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. <laughs> one million foreclosures. That's right. One million. We have finally topped the one million mark. Now, you will recall we talked uh, yesterday on the program about Ed McMahon. He's uh, one of the names on the list. And uh, perhaps you are one of the names on the list, or somebody you know is one of the names on the list, or one of your neighbors is a name on the list. There was a big story in the newspaper here in Los Angeles the other day about Merced, California, which is uh, up north. And uh, it's a place that's not exactly like a suburb of anything. It's one of those places that is far from all the major cities in the area. <laughs> but people were so desperate to buy houses. They were willing to live hundreds of miles from work in some cases, or certainly more than 50 miles in many cases. And they were building all these houses. And now uh, with the uh, plunging value of real estate and with the foreclosures topping a million and interest rates uh, on many of these loans uh, going sky high, Many of these houses were never completed. They're just left there with weeds growing around them and everything. Wow. One million foreclosures. We've hit one million. And um, I say for the average person, this is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. You know, people are talking about this like this is so terrible. I was watching this, uh, that loon Jack Cafferty who's on CNN. He's on before that other loon, Lou Dobbs. And he's reading email from listeners or viewers. And the American dream is crumbling, Jack. What's happening to the American dream? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm going to tell you what the American dream is. The American dream is after house prices go up so high because every moron with a bad credit score has been buying houses and bidding up the price of them. Finally, with foreclosures, the average person who works hard and has good credit will now be able to afford a house. One million foreclosures is a good thing. Take me as an example. Now, I, we're, we're talking, on, of course, a matter of scale, but it, it, it doesn't matter what, what income bracket you're in. I believe in buying what I can afford. And in 2000, I, w I wanted to buy a second home. And in 2002, and in 2003, and in 2004, and in 2005, the price of houses was going through the roof. In every price category, especially in the upper categories. But uh, by the way, this week we read the Napa Valley now has foreclosures. Ed McMahon is being foreclosed upon. The fact is... One million foreclosures means that, that people like me and maybe you, people who work hard, have great credit, have money put away, but just decided that houses were too expensive, you can now afford a house. I waited. I waited. I said, I said it to all the guys in this room and I said it to anybody I know who would listen to me. That uh, with what happened with interest rates and the fact that these are adjustable rate mortgages five years after 2002 or 2007 and beyond, uh, there's going to be blood on the streets. And that's when I'm going to buy my house. And I put my money where my mouth was. In February of 2008, I bought a house. But I didn't buy one in 2002 or 2003 or 2004 or 2005 or 2006 or 2007. Prices were too high. And all these unsophisticated morons who thought they were real estate moguls who went out and bought these houses they couldn't afford at terms they couldn't understand. Well, finally, they, these are the people who've been keeping the rest of us from buying houses at reasonable prices. For people with good credit, hardworking people with good credit who were shut out of the housing market for the last several years... One million foreclosures, that's good news. That's not bad news, that's good news. I'm thrilled to hear it. 
Many of you probably could not afford a house the last couple of years because you would go to buy a house. There'd be five people bidding on that house. Guess what? Nobody's bidding anymore. There's a million foreclosures. And the more foreclosed houses that are on the market, the more there's a glut of unsold houses, the more the price of houses is going to be driven down. And that's good for you. Unless you own one of the houses. <laughs> One million foreclosures. That's a good thing. Isn't it? It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. One million foreclosures served. Go to your calls at one 800 800 tom It's Stuart on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yeah, hi, Tom. How you doing? Doing great. Good. Uh, got a quick story for you. We were just recently in a, in a public magazine about how we're a, a family that's doing well financially and we're not stuck in a mortgage loan uh, that's depressing, but we're surrounded by other people that are, and we're trying to sell our house. We started selling before the foreclosure market, but as soon as we uh, put our house up on the market, foreclosures started popping up all over the place and made us reduce our price to compete with these other houses. I think that's pretty crazy, and I thought you might agree with me. Well, I mean, it's not that it's crazy. Uh, the fact is, first of all, the average person does not, and I'm not indicting you, it's the average person does not think. If they lowered interest rates uh, to the twos and the ones back in 2002, Anybody who knows what an adjustable rate mortgage is knows that in five years, they adjust upward. Right? Right. That means that people in 2007 and 2008 are suddenly going to get hit with very large payments. Absolutely. I I completely agree with you. And it looks like, you know, we're stuck, a happy family, trying to sell our house. Ah, but you see, had you thought about this... (laughs) <laughs> had you right. <laughs> had you re- realized what? Well, I guess it wasn't until recently that we're having a, a baby on the way and we need to expand. I guess that happened over the last twelve months. So, right. so that's but, that's unfortunate. But <laughs> even right. having a baby is something you can plan. So this is what we've decided, Tom, is to rent our place and to buy the new place at uh, at a later date. Now, do you we're, have uh, someone to rent it? Uh, we have some other. We have some people. We've been advertising on uh, Craigslist for the last couple of weeks. We've gotten some bites on it, but um, other, you know, free marketing tools have produced some people. But unfortunately, when we run credit backgrounds, a lot of these people are the reason why they are looking to rent is because they're in the foreclosure and have to right. Their house. And I can tell you that I live in an upscale neighborhood in the Hollywood Hills, and a house across the street for street for me, which was renting for seventy five hundred a month, uh, they right. now had to lower it to forty five hundred. Now, that may sound like a lot to you, but it's a, it's $3,000 less per month. It's, it's a, what, a 40% haircut there. Right, yeah. We have a multi-million dollar house in Southern Orange County here, and it's going to be tough to rent that type out. I'm sure you can uh, you can see that, but it's uh, you're, you're right. You're, you're spot on. I just wanted to call in and, uh, and, and give you my story. You are certainly unfortunate, but uh, to be honest, uh, you could have done a little more planning. It's the way it is, but uh, thank God you're not being foreclosed upon. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Jennifer on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom, how are you? Doing great. Good. I know you're really knowledgeable in terms of real estate, and I had a question for you. Talking about the average person with a good credit buying a house nowadays, what do you think it would you would need to have money saved up, maybe your average income that you're making for a young person like myself to actually look seriously at buying a house now um all right well first of all uh lenders are demanding higher down payments uh there's no uh no money down houses that i know of uh, there's no five percent loans anymore far as i know mm-hmm. uh, on my house and i've got a, a fico score over 800 Okay. FICO doesn't go to 900. It's uh, somewhere around uh, what is it, 820 or 830 is the highest score you can get. I'm over 800. And I had to put 25% down. Wow. To get my loan. 
Of course, I'm not looking for a house in the Hollywood Hills, but <laughs> no, no, but, but it, it does. It's, it does. It, it's not the, the amount of dollars. It's mm-hmm. it's the percentage. They want you to have a substantial risk along with them, right? So it doesn't matter if the house is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or, or or three million dollars. Mm-hmm. They want you to be taking more of a risk. Got you. The bank doesn't want to take all the risk anymore. Yep, I know I've heard you talk about young people buying houses or people being forced or think they're being forced or pushed or pressured into buying houses. And I was thinking about that recently, too, just because I make a decent amount of money. But it's like, do I, I was thinking about tax purposes, and I've heard you talk about don't buy a house just for tax purposes. Make sure you're stable enough. To well, I mean, how much money do you make? I mean, I don't make a bunch. I make, you know, over six figures. I mean, I make six figures and right. a little bit over, but. Okay. So what I, tax bracket are you in? Do you know? About just about a little below 30 percent. All right. So uh, as it is, uh, you're not even in the highest tax bracket. Oh, right. You, yeah. your, ta- your federal taxes in a given year are about $30,000. And uh, if you had a mortgage. How much would you be paying in interest per year? How much of a deduction would you get? The reason to buy a house, the number one reason to buy a house, in my opinion, mm-hmm. is, is to find a place you love and have the freedom to do what you want with it. Not as an investment. Not as a way of spinning it off and selling it to some other poor sucker. Mm-hmm. You have to love it. You have to love the neighborhood. You have to love the city. The city where you're buying. There's no other good reason to do it. Uh, th- th- these morons who bought, you're seeing what a good investment of re- <laughs> your own residence <laughs> is. Right. All right. Um, some people get lucky because they, they buy at a certain part of the cycle and they sell at another part. And they sell at the high end of the cycle. Most of those people didn't plan that out. They just got lucky. And when you sell at the high end of the cycle, you, you, most people have to buy something else, which is equally high priced. Yep. So you're rarely going to get rich on this. I don't care what rich dad, poor dad says. I don't care that the average person is a moron about this stuff. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. The two houses I have bought uh, that I currently own, my plan is to own them until I'm dead. These houses will be sold by my executor, not by me. That means I'm putting in the appliances I want. That means I'm painting them the color I want. Mm -hmm. That means I'm going to make whatever changes I want. I'm not going to be fixing it up to impress realtors or to impress buyers. I'm doing it for me. So if you don't feel that way, don't buy a house. Keep saving your money. Buy a place when a place that you love is something you can afford. And it has to be a place you love and will live in for at least five years. Yep. And if you haven't seen that, don't buy it. Awesome. Well, thanks for your advice. Love what you do. Listen to you all the time. So I appreciate it. Thank you, driver. One more thing. When uh, when I uh, moved to L.A. in 1988, I wanted mm-hmm. to buy a house. Do you know how long I waited to buy a house? And I probably mm-hmm. make a little more than you do. <laughs> <laughs> a little. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, no. ni- 1997. I waited nine years. Wow. Before I bought a house. Because I wanted what I wanted. I didn't want to live 50 miles outside of town. I didn't want uh, uh, to live in a house without a great view. I didn't want to commute. Mm-hmm. So I waited until I could afford what I bought. And I bought at the bottom of the market. I bought at the bottom of the market in 1997. And I bought at the bottom of the market again in 2008. That's a great point. So uh, the thing is, though, I did that by saying, I'm going to buy houses that I want to own and keep. Not this idea of buying starter homes or, I'll just live in this for a year or two and then I'll fix it up and sell it to someone else. Stupid. <laughs> That's true. It's stupid. And now that you see a million foreclosures, <laughs> maybe maybe you'll be reminded how stupid it is. <laughs> yep, you're right. I spoke at a financial seminar. I don't usually do that because I'm not a stockbroker. I'm not a realtor. But I was invited to uh, speak at a real estate seminar that some of the listeners may have attended. And I saw the horrified faces of some of the people I was speaking with because they were all there telling you, hey, great time to invest in real estate. This is a great time. And Gary was there. 
And I stood up on the stage. I told people, this is a terrible time to be buying real estate. And I would not buy it. And I looked around and I saw the other people on the panel and they were blanching. I mean, they were flipping out. They thought I was going to go up there and just say the same thing. Oh, it's a great time to buy. It's great. I told the truth. It was a terrible time to buy. And now we know I was right. Yeah, well, that's why I'm, why I'm asking your opinion today. I know you're you're pretty blunt in everything that you believe in. So, If you have a property that you're excited about that you can stand to live in for five years or more because you love it, this is a good time to buy. Okay. If you can't afford to put at least 20% down, it's not a good time to buy. But 20% of the cost of a house today is a lot less than 20% a year ago. That's true. So do it because you love it. Awesome. Thanks, Tom. Jennifer, thank you. It's definitely a good time to buy. One million foreclosures in America. We passed the one million mark. What do you think about that? Allie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. You know, I got to say, it's the, it's the lottery mentality that makes people greedy, and that's what drove the prices up, and it's it's people trying to, you know, make money on a house and, and not work hard for the money. I mean, I bought my house, and I saved the old-fashioned way. I don't have a mortgage. If more people did that, we wouldn't be in this pickle. Well, you're right about that. It's, you know. And many people like you. By the way, I'm like you. I, I, I have a mortgage, but I put a big down payment down. Yeah, I mean, you still get taxes, you got maintenance, you got all that. All these that's unforeseen right. costs that people overlook. And that's what, how they get into this problem. And they want to make $100,000 flipping, but they don't know how to flip. So then it all comes tumbling down because people get greedy and they want to get rich fast. Well, that, that, the thing is, they, they only report on, oh, it's so sad on TV. They don't report on the good part. And here's the good part. There's people like you who save, who work hard, who have good credit, who invest, who are, you know, they don't believe in buying a house until they've got enough to make a good down payment or until they can pay the whole thing in cash. Yeah, amen. People and like that old school thing. You don't, right, and you don't see that reported on TV. All you see are these news shows trying to appeal to all the morons, the greedy morons who drove up the price of houses and put themselves in this position in the first place. The f- that couldn't afford to buy a house in the first place. The good part of this story is the people like you who don't own a house, who've had to wait... Because they're prudent, now they can afford a house. Yeah, yeah. If I if I didn't need to buy a house for my for my child a couple of years ago, I wish I had waited till now. I could have put a big you know cash down payment on a bigger house. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. But my house is big enough, and I'm happy with it. And you know what? Don't be greedy. That's the that's the moral of the story. Well, beyond don't be greedy, don't buy a house unless you love it and plan to live in it for a very long time. And uh, I know a lot of people who bought houses saying, I don't like it all that much, but, you know, I'll, I'll live in it for a year or two, and then I'll sell it to someone else, then I'll, then I'll refinance, I'll, be, uh, I'll, I'll buy something else, and I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll trade up in a couple of years. No, no. Yeah, you're better off renting. Yeah, I have a sister that bought a couple of years ago in Vegas a house, and uh, they wanted to foreclose on her. I told her, I told her up and down and sideways, don't buy, don't buy. She didn't listen to me. There you go. Yeah, it's sad. Oh, well. Thank you, Allie. All right. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Scott on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? It's okay. Hey, I wanted to kind of get your uh, opinion on buying a home as your first home. You're saying it's dumb to buy one that you don't want. Right. Let's say you buy a house for $200,000 as a starter home. Let's say you sold it in 2004 for five hundred. You made 300000 imaginary dollars. So if you go to your next house for 500000 and you paid top dollar for it. That's, that's in a perfect world. That's in a perfect world. And by the way, you're not counting in all the expenses of owning a house. Property taxes. All the different kinds of insurance you need to have. Maintenance. Okay, if you don't have to, you don't have to maintain a rental, you still don't get the write-offs. I'd rather have the maintenance costs and be able to write off 100% of everything I have to do with my home and my mortgage because not being in, uh, in the radio and having the kind of income you had even in the early 90s when you were renting something, you still had to have other write-offs because you were smart and invested your money, so you had taxes and interest and everything you, you wrote off. Well, most people don't have that. Most write-offs are not – everybody does not need write-offs. It depends on how much money you make, what tax bracket you're in. And, okay, and, and sometimes – sometimes, but for example, uh, many people say that uh, having children, you know, you get a big uh, exemption. You get uh, tax credits. Uh, it's a good deal. Guess what? The cost of raising a child is far more than any tax credits you'll ever get. 
I, I agree with that. But I'm and and about- I'm telling you, for the average moron who knows nothing about real estate, let me tell you something. These people should not be in the real estate business. They know nothing about it. Right, I agree. But if you if you if you're renting a house and throwing away twenty five hundred dollars a month to live in a beautiful house that you want. Why not have a starter home and be able to write that off and be able to put that in? Because that you can get into a situation like now, uh, uh, like people who, uh, for example, the caller earlier who uh, bought a house and then uh, suddenly his wife got pregnant right when the market was down. And now he has to try to sell into a declining market. Right. Well, That's, he could probably sell that he thinks his house is worth $100,000 more than everybody else, just like everyone else. But, but guess what? A year or two ago, it was. Absolutely. It was, yeah. I'm and, okay with my house being less than I... Then I bought it for, but I got a good loan, and I'm I'm planning on it. I got a house that I like. Well, as long as you're planning on owning it for a long time, but 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 you see, a lot of people don't think that way. The average American moves every five years. Every right. five years, these are not people who should be buying real estate. I agree. I agree. I don't think you should ever sell your real estate, but I do believe you should keep buying and moving well, on. Well, the words, the phrase oh, "starter home" implies you're going to sell and buy something else. Yeah, but if you roll it in, don't you think it'd be a good idea? If you, no. If you, if you, no. No, no. If you bought something in 1987 when you got here and kept on rolling it over, you'd have that Hollywood Hills home and you would owe, well, you probably owe nothing on it now because you're you, but if you're somebody else that could have afforded it, you could have kept on rolling it and rolling it, you could end up being but, in but I, I also could have, I could have rolled at the wrong time. Yeah, because of the money you make, no, or just because of other investments. No, no, I mean, uh, what? Uh, for example, I, I, I moved to Boston for it turned out to be less than a year in 1993. At that time, the Boston market was, uh, the, the real estate market was uh, peaking. Uh, in the 90s, Boston had all this high tech and all these people moving to town and driving up the price of real estate. But I said to myself, I used your logic. I said, you know what? I need a write-off. So I'm buying a house. And I bought myself a townhouse on Beacon Hill. Guess what? Mm-hmm. Ten months later, I, I had to sell that house, move back to L.A. I had to sell it at a loss. Oh. That was not a good deal. Yeah, you get, it's a it's a risk reward type of thing. If you make it good, like the average person doesn't know about risk and reward, they should stick to mutual funds and other passive investments. They should not be getting involved in something they don't know anything about. All right, I, you, you've actually changed my mind. I could say preach it, brother. All right, <laughs> thanks we'll a lot. Up, I'll blow you up, baby. Here you go. Tom Likas. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. From Hollywood, it's Tom Likas. At 1 800 5800 Tom. Thank you for tuning in. Last Friday, tomorrow, 3 until 8 p.m. Pacific time on our live online stream. Also on 97.1 KLSX here in Los Angeles. Check your local listings. Flash Friday. Headlights go on tomorrow at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, you want to be here for that. By the way, Carolyn, 411-160, the comments are pouring in here uh, to our MySpace. Uh, go to MySpace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S and find out what the listeners thought of Carolyn. You can put your own comments up there as well. Go to uh, MySpace.com slash Tom Likas. And uh, get a look at Carolyn for yourself, and then uh, get a look at some of the comments. This just in to the Tom Likas newsroom. This report from CBS Radio. Dateline, Los Angeles. Someone left the engine running and lights on. It is a Cadillac. License number 6BNY036. It is on parking lot 2. Left of the elevators. Again, from CBS. Someone left the engine running and the lights on. Cadillac license 6BNY036. Parking lot 2. Left of the elevators. More other stories becomes available. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. First one there's got a cat. <laughs> First one there's a rot. Last one there's a rotten egg.
<laughs> oh, somebody found it. <laughs> There's somebody driving out of P2 right now. <laughs> Seriously, with what they pay in radio, why would you put a memo out like that? I'm thinking of five specific employees of that radio station who would not care if they lost their jobs. They'd rather own a Cadillac. They'll take their chances. We'll be seeing them on Channel 9 in about an hour. <laughs> They'll be on the 110 freeway. <laughs> Wow. Hey, here we are. One million foreclosures, everybody. One million. I love it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Joe on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going, man? Great. Hey, I'm a longtime listener. Love the show. Cool. Um, I just kind of wanted to get your opinion on something. I, I also have been a home buyer for quite some time. We actually bought in 94, I think it was, when the market was pretty low at that time. Uh, we lived in our first house for about 10 years. Um, I, I, everything that I'm hearing, I mean, you talk about, you know, buying the second house that you did uh, at the beginning of the year, and uh, everything that I'm reading is, is stating that, you know, the market's going to go probably negative the rest of this year. Um, and, and if you look historically, the trends typically are, you know, anywhere from 10 to 15 year cycles. What's your what's your thought on that? Well, uh, that would uh, bode well for my uh, theory on buying real estate, which is um, I buy for the long term. Right. Uh, if you buy for the long term, none of this matters. It's just like stocks. Um, if you play uh, Wall Street like a casino, you're going to lose big. Yeah. Um, the reason Warren Buffett is uh, the second wealthiest man in America is because he buys companies he understands and likes, and never sells them. So you, you don't think you would have been be, uh, better off waiting until, you know, like the end of this year or, ne or the beginning of next year? To I don't think thing? the average person can time the market. Right. Agreed. I will tell you, in April of 1997, when I bought my current house, the market was at its low for the previous seven or eight years. The following month, it went through the roof. Mm-hmm. Now, that was just luck. Right. I'll be the first to tell you, that was not brilliant investing. Um, I happened to be uh, uh, the owner of the rental property that uh, I was living in was selling, offered to sell it to me. I didn't like the house enough to buy it for what she wanted for it. So I had to find a new place to live. So I was forced to do something. And I decided, OK, now's the time I'm going to buy a house because the market's been depressed for so long. And now I've got cash. I'll do it. Right. Well, so I lucked out. But <laughs> the average dweeb, the average moron who was caught up in this foreclosure thing, uh, the average American, I don't think they know enough about timing the market to say, well, I'll, oh, I'm going to wait another six months, see what happens. You never know when this whole thing's going to turn around. No, I, I agree. I mean, I, I've, I've been saying that for, you know, three, four years at least, that this is it's getting out of control. And, and you know, the average person doesn't doesn't know when to get in. We it, Generally speaking, you have to act opposite of the herd, you know. Well, uh, but that's you see, that's why if, if your idea is to buy a place that's great, that will meet your needs for the next five years or more, a place you absolutely love and couldn't imagine selling, that's a good investment. Right. Even if it goes down more, it's going to go up eventually. Right. The way I see my two homes is they're only going up eventually. But in the short term, they're both going down. Yeah, I totally agree with you, man. Uh, hey, take me out with a crack in the ass. Here you go, Joe. All right, thanks, man. No, it's a crack in the ass, not a bong hit. Yeah, there we go. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to, uh, oh boy, there's so many people. It's Scott on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Going great. Well, I just bought my first house here the uh, middle of January. I've been looking for about six months or so. And um, it, with all the foreclosures and everything, I happened to jump on one just after the bank had uh, lowered it because they weren't getting their uh, original asking price, which means they cut about $50,000 off the price. And uh, you had 
we're talking about how, uh, you know, if you don't have at least 20% to put down on the house, you shouldn't, you know, be buying it. And one thing that my mortgage broker that I used, I went through, uh, I, I don't know, can I say the name of the uh, company? No, no need to do that. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, you know, most of them have this type of a, a program out there. It's, uh, for, for the first time buyers, there's, uh, grants out there and usually, uh, it goes by county uh, as far as how much is allowed for the numbers. And I, I bought my house in Hemet, which I know is out in the boondocks, but that's, you know, I got a really, really great deal on it. And uh, I plan on being there for a minimum five years, uh, longer if I can help it. And um, what, what they do is they've got these grants where, at least in the area where I'm at, you know, I was on ju just the high cusp of, you know, almost being, uh, making too much to qualify for it. But I ended up getting $20,000 free and clear with the only stipulation that I stayed there for five years. And, uh, so that knocked, uh, my price down from 118 to 98. And most of the uh, the mortgage brokers out there have something like this for the first time buyers. Now, granted, you do have to have you know pretty decent credit and uh, make enough money to handle the uh, the uh, property taxes, the mortgage, as well as the insurance. But uh, it you know anytime you can get you know pretty much free money, it definitely helps out. Well, uh, it definitely does, and I think that uh, you were smart to wait until the foreclosures came along. Now there's plenty of houses. I mean, the market is awash in houses. Oh, I know, and I'm I'm a single guy. It's just me and my three dogs at home, and you know we're we're loving our own place. You know, we we all got sick of renting, and unfortunately, having to deal with all the uh, shall we say issues with neighbors that come along with that. Yep, you're absolutely right. So, but yeah, I just wanted to, you know, bring that up because, uh, you know, I, I, what you were saying earlier about, you know, having money to actually put down really struck a chord with me. And uh, that was really the one thing that kind of, you know, gave me the kickstart to actually try to find somewhere, you know, finally realizing that I can afford a place on my own, even though, I mean, I'm not exactly making bank, but, you know, I make enough that for me, it's a fairly comfortable living and, even with uh, as exorbitant as most of the prices are, I found an area that I can afford that's a nice area, and I've still got about $60,000 equity in the house uh, just because of how far they had to lower the price to get it to move. Wow. Well, good for you. Here you are, 27 years old. You made a smart decision. Good for you. I really appreciate it, Tom. Uh, take me out with a bong hit. Here you go, Scott. Quickly, and it never goes quickly when I say quickly. Freddie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Freddie. Uh, well, my situation is different. Um, I bought a house because uh, my parents didn't have that much credit, so they, you know, pretty much tricked me into buying the house. They ended up leaving the house and uh, left me over there alone. I was making pretty good money, but I lost my job took me six months to find another job and by that time when i was trying to do the payment uh, arrangement it was just too much money and i ended up not being able to pay yeah i know and now we're out of time the tom like show